What's up, Brian Tong here, and this is my review for the new Apple TV 4K for 2022. And if you wanna find out if it makes sense for you to upgrade or not, that's why I'm here. And you know, there's some physical differences to point out, so I'm gonna do a quick unboxing of this new Apple TV 4K so we can compare it to the 2021 version. So let's get to it, and this one's for my ASMR fans. I know you out there, out there, okay. Let's just start off with, um, we have the box here, right? Take a good look at it. You can tell it's smaller size. I even have the original box from the 2021 model and you can see here, this is about maybe a third smaller in size. So uh, are you telling me that the Apple TV 4K in 2022 is a third smaller? Maybe, so let's let's pop this open here. We've got our tab, so hold on, hold on everybody. Okay, here you go. Ooh, one more. You like that? Okay. Let's do the honors. Let's do a little shake shake. Uh, can we do it? Okay. Here we go. One more shake. And. Oh! Ooh! It's an Apple TV 4K. But check this out here. I'm gonna bring this up. You're gonna see that this Apple TV 4K is 20% smaller than the 2021 Apple TV 4K. So the biggest physical change you'll see here is that this Apple TV 4K is 20% smaller by volume. You can tell it also feels lighter in weight and that is because this here is the first Apple TV 4K without a fan. I mean, this is a completely fanless design weight-wise, you can definitely feel it. This new passive thermal design takes advantage of Apple Silicon, which is power efficient, it runs cooler, and it's power more powerful all at the same time. So. Just to let you know, right? Take a good look at these, just the size, and see how different they are. In fact, <laughs> um, I just realized I've had this 2021 Apple TV 4K in this whole time. Like I just pulled it from my home theater. I, uh, I never, I never removed the, the bottom sticker of it, but now I am. Oh, oh, here, here's something new <laughs> that I just discovered. Okay, look here. Um, okay, in the front. Okay, look here. Front, if, if this can catch the light, um, the 2021 model has the Apple logo on TV, and then the 2022 model just has the logo. Let's flip them over. Oh, and what would you know? There's the Apple logo here, and there's no Apple logo on the new 2022 Apple TV 4K. See, I, I taught you something. We learned something. We all learned something today. Incredible, okay, now check this out. This is the $149 version, and this also has a gigabit ethernet. Let me just pull this, hold on, hold on, hold on. Woo! Yes, I'm looking out for you all. That ribbon, it's, it's kinda nice, right? But this is the $149 version that has the gigabit ethernet port here, all right? Um, it also has the larger 128 gig storage internally. This model itself also has thread networking support and so that allows it to act as a hub for compatible smart home devices. Now the $129 entry level model looks exactly like this, um, but it does not come with an ethernet port and it has a smaller 64 gig storage capacity. It doesn't have the thread support as well. But both models of the new Apple TV 4K support Wi-Fi 6.0 and Bluetooth 5.0 just like last year's model did. Now, honestly, I've never had an issue running out of space due to apps or games on any previous Apple TV that I've owned. And the biggest improvement internally here is the new Apple TV 4K comes with an A15 Bionic chip inside. And that gives us up to 50% improved performance and then up to a 30% improvement for GPU performance. But I'll be real, like honest, it's kind of too close for me to really tell the difference and say like, this is significantly faster for navigating the menus. It feels twice as fast. It, you know, is the UI faster and snappier? Maybe slightly, but this was never like a major issue with the 2021 version that has an A12 Bionic inside it. And also I'm gonna be real with you, like the performance upgrades, they don't really affect me as much because I'm not the biggest gamer on Apple TV, right? The CPU boost, the GPU boost, like that I just don't play games and even like, even if I have time for it now to do any type of gaming, I mean, that time is split between my PS5, my Xbox One X, you got those game consoles, and then also the iPhone and iPad. So there's a lot of things competing for uh, my time when I even have it. So until there's really a title that I must play 
on this Apple TV or an exclusive that everyone is talking about. Um, I just don't use my Apple TV for gaming at all. I'm, I'm just talking about my experience. So the GPU boost doesn't affect me that much and navigating the UI has just always been more than smooth enough. Now for me, Apple TV 4K has been the smoothest and really most responsive user experience out of any smart TV out there, streaming box out there on the market, and trust me, I've tried almost all of them. But one reason you might be really looking to get this Apple TV 4K is because it already supports Dolby Vision for great looking video content. And now, for the first time ever, HDR10 Plus comes to this. Now this is really more for people that really care about video quality and seeing the images as intended by the creators. Like most TVs have Dolby Vision, which has been really like the benchmark for video quality, dynamic range, um, color accuracy for years. But there are, you know, some mid-range and higher-end TVs, including a whole lot of Samsung TVs that do not support Dolby Vision, but those Samsung TVs do support HDR10+. So HDR10+, it's an improvement on HDR10 with quadruple the maximum uh, brightness for dynamic range up to 4,000 nits. HDR10+, it uses dynamic metadata to give you the optimal appearance for every frame of video and then gives your TV the best looking image it can. We know Dolby Vision has also used dynamic metadata as well uh, to give you the best overall quality of your image. But either way, HDR10 Plus on here, this is just another nice add-on in. You know, if you've owned a Samsung TV because they are really invested in the whole HDR10 standard and 10 Plus, like, and if you want the best image quality on an Apple TV 4K for you, then you, Samsung TV owners, uh, you are the perfect person for this new 2022 edition. Now also one new cool feature coming to the new Apple TV 4K later this year, it's called QMS VRR. QMS stands for Quick Media Switching. Then you got Variable Refresh Rate. We've heard about that in gaming, but we're gonna call this QMS for short here because what QMS VRR allows you to do is that if you're switching between media content that let's say runs at different frame rates, like you're watching a movie at 24 frames per second, and then frames, <laughs> frames per second, and then you go to a YouTube video that's, you know, the interface is 30 frames or 60 frames, even just going back to the main menu on an Apple TV. Sometimes on some TVs, there's a moment where you see a black screen or just a blank screen as it transitions between the two. So QMS is a new feature that's gonna remove that moment of annoyance, get rid of that black screen, and Apple is specifically working with LG directly to be the first TV maker to support QMS VRR for their 2023 TV lineup. This is not a feature that exists in current TVs today, uh, at least that I'm aware of, so this is just a nice user experience feature that could help you if you've experienced that before. Now there's also new Siri features coming to the Apple TV 4K and no, I did not forget about the Siri remote. This Siri remote, hold on. Do, do, do we need to do this? Do we need to do this? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay, some R Siri remote. Okay, so don't forget this, right? This Siri remote here, this with the new 2022 Apple TV 4K now comes with a USB-C port on it. It's right here on the bottom. Um, to if you can get a better look, you can see it here. And this is just another sign of the USB-C transition coming to all of Apple's devices in the next year or so. Now, one feature that will not be available, um, oh yeah, also, obviously, the power cable's here. Yay! Yay for power cable. Okay, I'm, now this is just getting messy again. Am I the only one that makes opens these things this messy? When you use Siri with Apple TV 4K, it will actually recognize your voice for up to six different family members. Now, obviously I wasn't able to test it yet. It hasn't come out end of the year, like I said, but it automatically switches to their up next screen that's tailored for that specific family member uh, because it knows it's you and your preferences, even if it hears your voice while using someone else's profile. So that is pretty sweet. Um, in case you've been sharing the same main screen with everyone in the family, it's just a whole lot more personal. And you know, when you first uh, kind of record your voice so it knows you with a Siri setup on your phone, it remembers that data. So that's how it knows who is who because our voice is linked in that way. There's also another Siri feature where you can ask who stars in this uh, when you're watching a TV show or a movie and you will now see a self-contained area that shows you the cast of what you're watching. I like to think of it as 
Prime Video X-Ray, that feature, but for Apple, on the new Apple TV 4K, instead of you going to your phone and kind of taking you away from the experience, it shows right up on the screen, so I think that's also really cool. Now you also still get the same iPhone benefits uh, that work with an Apple TV 4K, like having an easy setup, right, where you hold your phone next to it when you first set up your Apple TV 4K, or you're using your iPhone to calibrate your TV to your room, or using the iPhone as a remote. I mean, it still has a lot of synergy there. You can also still use Apple TV 4K for your Apple Fitness Plus workouts, and then just everything else that you used with it before. But the new Apple TV 4K for 2022, it starts at $129 for the 64 gig version with just Wi-Fi. The $149 version, this gives you 128 gigs of storage. You get a gigabit ethernet port and the ability to use it like a smart hub with smart devices. So now as someone who has an Apple TV 4K that I just bought last year, it's hard for me to really make that leap because it already does everything that I need and want to do and it does it well. Now the lower entry price point though, this is finally getting closer to those $99 or cheaper streaming stick competitors, which has really been one of the criticisms of Apple TV in the past. But you know, I could also see myself potentially getting one of these new TV 4Ks because it's smaller for the road, it's lighter, and you know, I travel a lot for work. So we know that those hotel TVs, they are so slow and the interface is clunky. So you know, maybe that's what I'll do, but I haven't done it yet. Now, if you own a Samsung TV and you want the best streaming video image quality with an Apple TV, uh, you're part of the ecosystem. I mean, you care about getting the best image quality. This is a no brainer. This Apple TV 4K makes absolute sense to you. If I owned a Samsung TV, I'd honestly have mine on pre-order already. I'm a video file. I just care about that stuff. Or if you just like buying new things all the time, go for it live your life, you probably buy everything that Apple puts out. The Apple TV 4K for 2022, yes, it is an incremental update, but you got a smaller size, a new A15 Bionic processor, you get HDR10+, and then some of those new features that I talked about, they just might be worth it to you. Now for me, I'm not going to upgrade yet. I think this is a solid Apple, but a lot of you are probably gonna be okay, but if you got that Samsung TV, I think this makes the most sense for you.